we saw in uh, in the ring this um, crazy crazy and uh, yeah tomorrow I start preparing for my next fight with Joey Pataya. Saturday the 17th of February will be a hot night of action in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. And I'm not just talking about the suffocating furnace that the Saudis call weather. The undisputed heavyweight showdown between Alexander Usyk and Tyson Fury will be an event showcasing multiple title fights, including the unavoidable collision between Jairo Pattaya and Maris Bredis as they run it back a second time. These two seemed almost destined to meet again. This time around, however, Obataya will be defending his Ring Magazine title and both will be vying for the now vacant IBF Cruiserweight title. After Obataya vacated the belt before, the IBF could strip him for not facing his mandatory. That same mandatory that he's now set to fight. It's all a little convoluted, so let's get into it. Jai Opataya was presented with an opportunity to fight on a big show in Saudi Arabia and earn a substantial sum of money in his previous bout, only a couple of months ago. But the IBF sanctioning body would not grant Opataya a second exemption to postpone facing mandatory IBF challenger Maris Bredis, as the IBF had already given Jai an exemption to fight Jordan Thompson in his previous bout, the bout before facing and ultimately stopping Ellis Zorro in the first round last December. The IBF were not prepared to give a second exemption and furthermore, for a fight against Zorro who didn't have a world ranking. There was a brief standoff before Jai opted to vacate the belt before getting stripped. Opatai did make the statement afterwards that he would get his belt back and fast forward only a couple of weeks later, the opportunity to retrieve his belt quickly arrived. Opataya is looking very dangerous in the ring. Two quick turnaround fights to see out 2023 and now another bout this coming February will make it three fights in roughly six months. That's about every other month. Focused, hungry and determined boxers kill for this kind of activity. And since signing to a co-promotional deal with Eddie Hearn's Matchroom and a cash injection from Saudi Arabia who have taken an acute interest in not just the sport of boxing over the last few years, but also an interest in Jai Pattaya. It would appear that Jai is going to have a hectic schedule in 2024. After a long layoff post the Breeders' fight, I doubt that Jai has any complaints. Activity is a massive key here in this fight, and since their first bout, Jai Pattaya has kept himself busy. And although the Thompson bout only lasted four rounds, and the Ella Zorro fight after that was over in the first round, Opatai has remained sharp and felt the hot lights overhead more so than Maris Breedis. This is a problem for Breedis, who hasn't stepped in the ring since his fight with Jai. Will that inactivity play a role? Maris Breedis was in talks to face Zurdo Ramirez for the vacant IBF title before Zurdo turned his attention towards Arsene Gulamarian and the WBA belt. Perhaps Zurdo and team feel that this is an easier fight than taking on the once formidable and dominant Maris Breedis. I say once because we don't know what kind of fighter remains after the first Breedis vs Opatia fight. Up until that fight, Breedis had only endured one loss and that was to unified heavyweight champ and former cruiserweight undisputed champ Alexander Usyk. Other than Usyk, Breedis had been dispatching all opponents even beating and knocking out heavyweights. In the last decade or so, you can make the argument that before Jaya Bataya arrived on the scene, both Usyk and Breedis were the more dominant forces in the cruiserweight division. At 39 years of age, and after the epic war against Bataya and niggling injuries that have compounded inactivity woes, how much of the old Breedis is left? I'm in my 40s and obviously not an athlete. Getting up off the couch to go use the toilet sometimes feels like a chore. Breedis is knocking on 40, and I wonder how the grueling nature of training day in, day out is impacting his body, and how strong the desire to become a four-time world champion is. Breedis has a boxer slash puncher style of fighting. He possesses a good ring IQ and is economic in his output. Typically working behind a high guard and stiff multi-purpose jab, Breedis uses the ring space well constantly shifting laterally or to and throw, looking for openings to unload in short, small punch combination bursts. Once Breedis has an opponent in trouble, he goes for the kill with heavy thudding shots. In 30 professional bouts, he has stopped 20 of his opponents with this power. 
Breeders does have a bad habit of lunging and occasionally swinging for the fences when backed against the ropes. But generally speaking, if much of the old Breeders remains, Jai Obatai could be in for another long night against the Latvian. If I'm wrong, I'm happy to milk a bull, but it's in this content creator's opinion that Jai Obatai is a massive handful for anyone at Cruiserweight right now. Obatai's sharp and darting movement, speed, accuracy, timing and power is off the charts. Add to this his growing confidence, momentum and activity, and you have to arrive at the conclusion that there isn't another 200 pounder that can stop the Obatai Express. You would need to be full of beans and possess a cast iron chin to stay in there for 12 rounds with him. Funnily enough, it was Obatai that was worse for wear the last time these two met, but I get the sense that it's Breedus as tough, brave and talented as he is, who is least looking forward to this rematch. Personally, I think Breedus is too durable to be stopped, but it is possible. Nevertheless, I'll play it safe and say Obatai for the win on points. Who do you think wins? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching Pound for Pound TV. Please remember to subscribe and hit that notification bell for future updates. See you in the next one. Check out our Patreon page to become a Patreon family member where you will receive some cool perks. If you're looking for some new threads, we've got t-shirts, hoodies, and much, much more. So head on over to our Michael A. Kobe Pound for Pound TV stores. They can be found on Redbubble and Spreadshop. Join me on my travels and head on over to my other YouTube channel titled Barefoot and Free. There you can find me as I traverse the many parts of our planet and occasionally get into a spot of bother. Nonetheless, it's always fun and entertaining. If you're struggling with some of life's obstacles and challenges, my book How to Get Out of Life Traps might just be the answer that you're looking for to help guide you through the difficult times. It's helped many get past some of their darkest moments and it might do the same to you. You can purchase it on Amazon where you can also find a wide range of my other works. Those works include screenplay to book adaptations, a fairly unique concept with genres covering comedy heist and revenge, drama, supernatural and crime, if that's more your cup of tea. You can find them by following the link provided.